It's spring 2018, so that means we have a lot of new laptops to take a look at. Today will be the Dell XPS 13, which has got a nice revision, but today I'll tell you why it's more evolution than revolution. Stay tuned. For the all-new Dell XPS 13 9370, there are plenty of smaller changes. The Infinity Edge display is now 23% thinner, although you probably won't notice as much. It just looks better than ever. We're also talking about a new generation of that Sharp Exo display. We can finally now hit 400 nits without the banding issues that the old one had. It also comes now in 4K, which I used to think was overkill in the 13-inch range, but now, well, I'm in love. But don't worry, you can still get full HD as well. I should also mention there is no more gloss or matte options. Instead, well, you get both. I'll talk a little bit more about that after. Perhaps the other big change is this new rose gold and white version. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. You also have far field Cortana microphones, Windows Hello with facial recognition and more. But let's give a quick tour of this device and show you what's new. Coming to the ports of the 9370, you have a device lock as well as two USB Type-C ports. Those are full Thunderbolt 3. That means they can do dual 4K displays. You can also charge the device using that port as well. And for those paying attention, yes, these are full 4X PCIe lane supported. That means you can use an eGPU and get the full benefits there. So Dell has finally fixed that. You still get the battery meter as well. Always a nice touch. One of my favorite changes though is this. Dell has moved the speakers from the bottom edge of the device to the sides. Still not as good as top firing, but you know what? This is good enough for me. These sound really, really good. Not the best speakers on the market, but I'd put this as near the top. Coming to the right-hand side, you still have your headphone jack, another USB Type-C. This one, though, is just 3.1, so you can use it for peripherals, but not necessarily charging. And a micro SD slot. That's a bit of a shame, as we do not have the full SD card slot, which the XPS 13 line was really known for for a long time. Now, usually the front of these devices are kind of boring, but there's some interesting stuff going on here. Over here, you still have a LED light that shows you when a device is charging, just a nice little touch. You also have these four holes here. So you have four far field reaching microphones to use with Hey Cortana or any other service if Alexa comes to this device later on as well. And you can use it with your phone. And I'll explain a little bit about that later on, but these are very good microphones and they're there for a reason. Turn to the bottom of the 9370. We still have this full grill here for the vent intake. There are now dual fans on the inside of this, along with Gore-Tex as an insulation material. Keeps it all very cool. It also allows Dell to run that CPU at a very high rate. We'll talk about more about that shortly. You can also see where the XPS logo is. There's no more that little door that used to flip up. Instead, they have all the information over here. So a lot cleaner looking, really nice. You also have your hex screws here if you want to remove this. You can't change a lot on the XPS 13 except for maybe the SSD, but the RAM is soldered on, and of course the processor is soldered on as well. Opening up the XPS 13 and boy, does it look gorgeous. Like I said, those display bezels are actually a little bit thinner. Let's talk about this display. This is the 4K model, like I said, next generation IGZO. It gets brighter now around 400 nits. That makes it really good for outdoor use. But I mentioned earlier about the matte glossy option is no longer there. Instead of what it is, it's a glossy display that has a matte anti-reflective overlay to it. So you get the best of both worlds. This is one of my favorite displays for that reason. You still get great color contrast, but it's not going to be all washed out with that matte overlay. Instead, it's still a full touch screen and it just looks really good. The colors are sharp. You're talking 99% sRGB, also 79% Adobe RGB. So that's a very good color profile for this device. I love this display. However, I am now a big fan of the three by two aspect ratio and this, you're still going to get the older one. So that's something I wish Dell would fix later on, but overall, not a big deal. Let's be honest, this is the standard way that laptops look these days. Now let's talk about the camera. As you can see here, Dell has now centered it, put it right below the logo and you can see the little band there as well. I, you know, this is going to be a thing. If you use a webcam every single day and you absolutely rely on it, this is not your laptop. This is not going to be any better for a web camera at all. 
The benefit, though, is they did throw in Windows Hello facial recognition for the first time with the XPS 13, and I love it. It works very well, even though it doesn't see your entire face. It actually works with no issue. Um, you know, like I said, there's not much you can do about that. I don't really care personally. I barely use web cameras, and apparently 60 to 70% of laptop users barely use it as well. So it is what it is. Overall, though, I love the look of this. I think it looks really nice. And if you don't like facial recognition, you can get the optional fingerprint reader now built into the power button. It's okay, it gets the job done. It's still not as fast as your smartphone, but you can use one or the other or both at the same time. It doesn't really matter. If you put a mask on and you don't want to use facial recognition, you can use that fingerprint reader and it'll work too. Let's talk about this keyboard. So layout is basically the same as the older version, but the key travel is actually slightly improved. It's 1.3 millimeters. I really like this keyboard. I've said Dell's keyboards are really good in the past, but they never changed them. They made subtle changes here, but they're the right subtle changes. So I give this keyboard really high marks, love typing on it. Now, it does have two-stage backlighting, looks really nice. With the white keys, obviously the contrast is not gonna be as good, but it still gets the job done. I do like how it's basically black for the keys versus silver, which is kind of what HP was using. So during daylight, it looks really nice. Not much has changed with the trackpad either. Still the same size, still the same style. Very smooth glass surface. I really love the feel of their trackpads. Clicking is very good. And yes, Precision Driver is my favorite, of course. Dell's been using those for a while. One of the best trackpads you can get on a device and just makes the overall experience really, really good. Let's talk about the new deck style here. As you can see, it is glass woven fiber. That's different from the carbon fiber used in the black version. I absolutely love this. You can actually draw on this with a Sharpie and a wipe off, including like a week later. Now, I'm not gonna demonstrate that here, but it does work. I've seen it done in person. Very stain resistant though. That's the whole point of that, meaning after months and months of usage, you won't see much stains on this at all. If not, you just wipe it down. The other good thing about this design is it doesn't show fingerprints. When it comes to the feel of the device, it does feel like a combination between linoleum and carbon fiber. It's sort of cool to the touch and has some texture to it. I think it feels great. All right, let's talk battery performance. No surprises here. Dell is using the new Intel 8th generation 8550U. That's a Core i7. You can also get it in the 8250 in the Core i5 model. And later this year, they will be introducing a Core i3 model as their entry level for around $799 or $899 price tag. For now though, if you want the Core i3 version, you'll have to get the 9360. Now Dell is going to continue selling the older version, the 9360, with the current Intel 8th generation processors through mid-2018. They're giving people the choices there, so if you want that version, you can still get it, and it's still a good one. Check out our early review for it. Now when it comes to the actual performance, the Core i7 is outstanding. I do like the fact it's a quad-core processor. That means when it comes to multi-core tasks, very heavy lifting things, you can get a little boost of performance. Still not a gaming laptop. Don't buy this if you're expecting to play high-end games. That's only reinforced by the fact this only ships with a UHD 620 processor for the GPU. So that's just a standard Intel built-in one. Does not have a discrete GPU, which would have been nice, but the thermals would have been really tight on a device this small. Let's talk quickly about that RAM. So it's 4, 8, or 16 gigs, though the 16 gig is actually clocked a little bit higher, 2133 megahertz. So if you're really into performance, make sure you get the 16 gig option. Remember, you can't update the RAM later on. It is all soldered to the motherboard. Now, when it comes to storage, you have a few options, including a 128, 256, 512, or one terabyte. That's gonna be a Samsung PM961 SSD. So very good performance there for at least reading times. Write times were a bit slow for me. I did not care for that too much. That's probably just a driver issue though, as that drive is very good. Now, when it comes to battery here, you're talking a 52 watt hour. That's actually down from 60 watt hour, the previous version. And that may sound bad, but Dell tells me they reworked the motherboard here. So it's a smaller board. It's better wired, for instance, now it has that 4X PCIe lane. So they moved everything around to completely new design. And because of that, it's more efficient. And they're not really lying. I'm running the 4K version here with Core i7 and an SSD. And I get around eight hours of battery life. Now, that's not outstanding, but for that performance and for what the feature set here, I think that's actually very good. Now, if you go for the full HD model with a Core i5, I would say you can easily get 10, 11, or 12 hours even. 
So far, a standard Ultrabook for 2018 review, but I wanna talk about something unique to the Dell XPS line, and actually new Dell devices coming out in 2018, that is Dell Mobile Connect, and no one else is doing this as much as Dell. So what is Dell Mobile Connect? It's a UWP app, that is you download it from the Microsoft Store, and it connects to your Android or iOS device. Okay, you can do that for a while now. AirDroid has been out in the market for a long time, but this app is so good. I almost recommend buying this laptop for this app. More specifically, if you're a big person who carries a laptop around with them and their smartphone all the time, well, this is gonna be an awesome solution. So what it does is it allows you to actually take phone calls on the laptop. That is, you can keep your phone in your bag. If a phone call comes in, you get a little pop-up. And what's really neat about this pop-up is no one can see who it is. So if you're sharing your computer with someone and a call comes in, it doesn't reveal who's calling. You have to put the mouse cursor over it and now it shows their picture and their phone number and all their personal information. And I just love that little detail there. You can also do full SMS text messaging. So if a message comes in, you can respond right to it. You can also create new messages. You can even do emoji. Although you can't really do full pictures and some other things, but it's getting there. The other cool feature if you're running Android is it does full mirroring of the device. So that is you can show your entire smartphone on your PC and then interact with it, including running apps. So you can run Instagram through your phone. You can do everything on your phone through the PC now, and it works really well. And the reason is, is because Dell is using a combo of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi direct technology. That means it doesn't go through Wi-Fi. It's not going to the cloud first, then to the PC. It direct connects and you don't need a local network. I can't express how cool this feature is. As soon as you open the laptop, it gives you a little bubble saying it's connected to your phone, and you can just use your phone as if it were through the PC. And if that sounds something very interesting for you and you can use in your daily life, that is a very cool option. Now I'd love to see Microsoft integrate that into Windows 10 for everybody, but for now, if you want that, you'll have to buy a brand new Dell laptop, but I recommend it. All right, let's bring it all in. So the XPS 139370, what an excellent laptop. I really don't have much negative to say about it. The battery life for me was very good. Typing is excellent. I love the trackpad. That display is really, really nice. The whole form factor just feels really nice. And I really like that new white and gold version. Now, if you don't like that, don't worry. Silver and black is still an option available. Performance is also very good. I didn't see a lot of throttling, and now you can plug this into an external GPU if you want that. The port selection is pretty good. I would have still preferred to have a USB Type-A port there on the side or a full SD card slot, but it's 2018, and clearly all these companies are now moving towards that new future, and I guess I'm okay with that as well. So what about negatives? Well, of course there are a few. That web camera is still just awful. Now, like I said, doesn't bother me, but if you rely on a web camera every day, you know, that's gonna be possibly a deal killer. That's a shame, unfortunately. There's also the issue with coil wine. Yes, I did experience coil wine with this device. Now, doesn't bother me, it can, but I know some people are super sensitive to high-pitched noises. I did hear it, especially when plugged in, just like Surface Book 2. It seems to be a feature of that new Intel processor, unfortunately. It's also a little bit of an expensive laptop. It starts at $1,000, but you can go well over 2,000 when you spec it all out, but it is a premium device device after all. And finally, there's no Core i3 option available. Now, I don't think that's a huge deal, but it would have brought that price down to around $799 as a starter price. So you have to wait a few months before that hits the market. So to summarize, Dell did a very good job here with the 9370. Now, some people wanted them to revolutionize this device all over again. I'm actually glad they kind of didn't. This has always been a very forward-looking laptop and they address all the concerns and criticisms I had of last year with this version. So because of that, I have to give them a choice award and a rating of five out of five. That is, you should definitely check it out. So if you're wondering how this compares to the HP Spectre or the Surface laptop, well, leave me a comment below and maybe we'll do a comparison in the coming weeks between those devices. If you want more information and more details about this full review, make sure you hit the link in the description below as we'll have that on Windows Central. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. Perhaps the biggest change is the new... <coughs> Why is my voice all f***ed up? Sorry, Mark. Yeah, pause a sec. I'm getting hiccups and my voice is. <clears throat> Don't record this.